In this lesson, we're going to learn a few different ways that we can affect our tracking data to get a smoother, less noisy track. Okay, so I have this scene set up for you already, and um, we're just starting out in your project files in 04 underscore begin. And I'm going to go ahead and just play this through so you can kind of see what's going on here. So what I've tracked in this scene is this watch on our guy's hand. And originally that watch was orange. So I've tracked the watch and added a roto shape just to kind of outline that watch. And then I added a color correction to desaturate it. So if I select the color correction node and we hit D just to disable that node, you can see it gets that little X through it and the color correction goes away and we see that original color. Now this is something that you might have to use tracking for to desaturate something over time, um, but that's not what this lesson is about. This lesson is about smoothing out your track. So I didn't want you to take any time just to figure out how to set all of this up. It's already done for you. So um, basically this type of shot is notorious for having a noisy or jittery track. So let's watch that playthrough again. What's happening is we have a really smooth camera pan that is noticeably smooth as it moves across our scene. So you can see it just, you know, very smoothly goes from one side to the other. We don't get any kind of rotation up and down. It doesn't feel handheld. This is shot on a dolly. So um, these kinds of shots are notorious for having noisy tracks because they themselves are so obviously um, very smooth. So um, in the end, really what happens is, you know, the track, um, the camera itself might move around just a little bit. Maybe you get something like um, even carpet fibers in whenever you're pushing that dolly across the floor can can give you just a little bit of bounce. And to the eye, the whole track still looks very smooth um, or not the track, the, the shot looks very smooth. But then whenever you start using tracking data from that shots, uh, it starts to have a little bit of a bounce and a little bit of noise. So I want to show you how to fix that. Um, and definitely a pan like this isn't going to be the only time that you see noise in a shot, but it's definitely one of the worst. So um, let's go ahead and select our tracker. I'm just going to double click that so you can see what we have here. Um, and then go over to your tracker tab. So I want you to just take a look at what we've got here. So remember how I said, you know, that shot was very smooth. Um, and now what we're seeing here is not a straight line. We get kind of this little up and down motion um, with our different points. So, you know, this happens partially because the tracker itself isn't 100% accurate. Um, as things move across the screen, they're going to change pixel color, and that's what the tracker has to use. So um, it's not always going to be exactly the same, and you get these tiny little variations. Now, this is not bad noise. You're going to see probably um, a lot worse noise as you learn how to track more and you run into more things. But the way that we fix this um, is definitely a balancing act. So I'm going to show you how to go ahead and get started with that. Let's come over here to our transform tab in our tracker node. And you see that we have this option here, the smooth. So then we also have the T, R, and S. So what that's saying is the amount we want to smooth the translation, the rotation, and the scale. Now, I don't want to change the scale or rotation because this was simply a translation style track, up and down, left and right info. So what I want to do is to come into this box here, and we'll just enter in the value 1 and hit enter. Now you can see that we get a little bit of a difference in our lines. Now originally it was kind of hard to see, but that red line was underneath the gray line. And this gray line now is a little bit more straight. You can see the red line kind of goes up and down behind that gray line. So even with a value of one, we're getting a lot straighter, more just smooth track. Now a lot of the time I wouldn't recommend changing this um, a lot more than a one if you're trying to do something like what I've done here where you're tracking a specific object that you're trying to cover up. Now if you wanted to just get tracking data and then have a completely different object move along with that then you could get away with more smoothing. But notice if I come into this smooth box and let's say turn this up to a value of something like 10 even though the track is more smooth 
the shape isn't staying in place. So what I meant by balancing act earlier was just that if you smooth it too much, you're not going to have an accurate track and you're basically destroying the purpose of, you know, tracking in the first place. But you can just um, use a smaller value like a one, maybe a two, and that's just going to give you that smoother track and just make that watch appear to be a little or the mask around the watch to be a little more integrated into your shot. Now another way that you can fix tracking data before you've ever even gotten to the point where, at, where we are at now where you've already tracked this is in the settings tab. So um, if you click that settings tab we've got a pre-track filter. Now in Nuke 7 this defaults to adjust contrast um, and so basically what that's doing is it is calculating if it had a color correction on the whole shot and kind of bumped up those whites and pushed up those blacks to make it more contrasty, it's going to have a little bit more accurate track. And we're going to talk about how to actually um, manually add a color correction to help us get better tracking data um, later on in this course. But it can do this in the background um, just kind of with this setting uh, chosen here. But we also have this other setting that is the median. And choosing median before you do a track is going to help you to get better, n less noisy data as well. Um, it can take a little bit longer to process, but um, I mean, if you're trying to track something, it's probably worth it. So you, may, you might just... Um, experiment between using the median and the adjust contrast before you do your track to see what gets you the least jittery track. And sometimes median isn't going to help you. It just really depends on, a, it's a very shot by shot basis. Um, but most of the time, I really prefer to use the smooth. I get um, pretty much instant results and I don't have to redo tracks um, if something didn't work for me. So those are just a couple ways that you can um, work with smoothing out your data.